Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn to take your health back. Streaming live from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, we will be talking story with Joe Ho, owner and CEO of Mystical Sounds and a longtime friend. Let's welcome Joe Ho. Aloha, Joe. Hey, Wendy, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you, and thank you for being here. We actually share the same last name. My maiden name is, is, is Ho as well. Who knows? We probably are related, right? Way back in the days. And, you know, my, our last name is very famous too in December time. You know, everybody say Ho, Ho, Ho. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, three times, right? <laughs> so we are very famous no matter what. And there's so many jokes around that name. It's, not, it's, it's funny. And I love, I love that last name. So when I got married, I married a guy and his last name is Lo. We just added the L. So <laughs> I'm still known as Wendy Ho or WHO is who. So I won't even so, go into those, de those details on, the, on that. <laughs> the past, the past is the past. So Joe, you know, when I was digging through your, your files and things, I tried to find uh, photos of you when you were a kid, but I couldn't find any. So I found one with you climbing the Great Wall of China. So let's start with that and just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your, your roots. Yeah, I was born in uh, Hong Kong, and then my parents immigrated to Hawaii uh, because of economics, and they figured it might be better for myself. And here I am, and luckily it turned out to be okay. Yeah, it turned out to be really well. Um, if you didn't tell me, you sound and look like a local boy, so um, you are Kamaina, right? Uh, I, ho I hope so. I went to elementary school here, and yeah. I went to intermediate school at Kamoki. And then I went to Kalani High School, graduated from there, and then UH. And what year was that? Let me see. <laughs> now you want me to show my age. <laughs> you know why? Because even if you said it, we wouldn't believe it because, you know, Asians age well. Let's just put I, it that way. I'll buy you lunch tomorrow. <laughs> Very good. So, you know, I know you came from Hong Kong and you came to Hawaii, but I know you must have done a lot of traveling in your time. Tell us, where's the most fabulous trip that you've taken up to date? You know, some of my highlights I would say is Russia and also uh, Paris. I love those cities. I mean, it has so much antiques and history. And when I went there, I just felt like with uh, Russia, I felt like 1950 New York. And wow. uh, with uh, Paris, it's just a city of lights. It's lights everywhere. That's what I do. So I love it. Right. Wow. So, you know, getting into that. So share with us a little bit about your business, Mystical Sounds. How did you come up with that name? So uh, when I was going through all the different names, I had to think of something that I thought was unique. And then, so it took me a while. And then... The original name was Magical Sound with my mm. ex-partner. Uh, mm -hmm. So a little advice, never go into business with your best friends. Yes. <laughs> yes. So after, that that. Ev after that scenario, uh, I had to, uh, we broke up and then I have to think of a different name because he said to me, I could not use Magical Sounds. Mm. So it took me a week and I came up with Mystical Sounds and the rest is history. Wow, it sure is. And so at what, at what year did you start Mystical Sounds? Back in 1985. And one wow. of our first events was for Iolani High School, the senior prom. Wow, so you were attending the prom as well at the same time? <laughs> at that time, it was me. We just trying to do anything we can get. It was like, can we please have your business? So we were doing <laughs> amazing setup. I, I remember it was doing uh, this UH 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 dawn dance we gave them everything music video sound lighting special effect for only 150 dollars just enough for us to cover our meals right but that's what we do right as business people we in the beginning you have to give it away get your name out there and then people can see what you do and your your integrity and your reputation and you know what that one it wasn't a free gig for you or you didn't give away anything free because Lord knows that's advertising and you knew exactly what to do and how to do it even back then. And thus the, the longevity of your professional career. So that's and amazing. And, and you know, you're exactly right. You know, since I'm Chinese, right? So I cannot <laughs> give everything away. So yeah. I figured as long as I can at least get some dinner money, 
Mm -hmm. Angel Marquis and dinner money. We did Amazing. it. Amazing. So, you know, I don't know if you remember doing my daughter Angela um, Lowe's photo booth for her grad night. But um, that was an amazing night. And I was just wondering, do you still offer those kinds of photo booths and fun opportunities at your functions? Yeah, actually, we are a one-stop shop. So we still do the photo booth. And with the photo booth, what we like to do is put the client, their logos or their the image they want, uh, the theme they want, because, because we set up a green screen. So this way, and we show the client the, re the ending results before they actually get it. So they just like, no complaint, 100%. Wow, complete satisfaction because they viewed it beforehand, right? Yes. Yeah, perfect, great marketing. So back in the day, I know when you got started, I know you did proms and, and things. I know you did weddings. So weddings must have been a really big part of your business. What percentage of your business would you say uh, would have been with weddings back then? I say about maybe 60%. And then the rest is mostly wedding convention and special events. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I know that weddings are very difficult. I mean, it could be very difficult trying to please that bride and, and the, the groom, mostly the bride. And then um, after all that hard work, but everything in pictures and the experiences, I know all of them have um, just great fond memories that you've helped to create. And um, I know you have a lot of great experiences with that, right? So it's funny you say that. We like to meet with the couple. I like to meet with them personally ahead of time. And I always tell the couple, no matter what, Murphy's Law, anything can go wrong. But <laughs> as long as you two are happy and make sure you show that you're happy that night. And like you say, it's so funny because like usually the groom never get mad. <laughs> you know, we gotta worry about the prizella. That's a word for that, right? <laughs> So with that said, I just tell the groom, as long as you smile, you pay the bill, and just say yes, she will be happy, and everybody will be happy. Everything will fall in place. Wow. You've been doing it a long time. It sounds like you're, you're such the professional and, and the marketer, but you're absolutely right. Make uh, him understand and just say yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and in the long run, and in the photos and the memories will tell the rest. Yeah. But um, now that we're two plus years into COVID, have you noticed a return on the wedding business yet, or is it too soon to tell? You know, um, we were shut down for almost two and, uh, two and a half years, almost. Yes. And then this past December, we opened up. Yes. I mean, people are hungry to do events and weddings and just all kind of private events. So, you know, I was doing really good, super busy. And then Omicron hit. And it's like, here we go again. It felt like day one of the pandemic, everything started to shut down again. So, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. That's, that's what we have to go through as a service industry. Right. I mean, j not just you, Joe, all the restaurants, all the businesses. I mean, it's like a yo-yo effect, you know, like they don't know if they're coming or going. It's a roller coaster. They're going up and down. And um, I just wonder sometimes how much can we endure? And so uh, being that I'm retired, I try to support as many businesses as I can by volunteering and just showing up to help you know, them get through these, these bumps. And so um, if ever you need any help, um, my motto or my slogan is, I'll work for free, just feed me. <laughs> so <laughs> I go wherever it's I... on air. <laughs> I'm committed. The Chinese guy. <laughs> and you know, I do a lot. I mean, like I'm telling you 12 hour shifts, it doesn't matter. You just feed me and I'll make your, your business and whatever you need work because I understand how it is and I understand how tough it is at this moment. Um, running a business for 20 plus years, um, yeah, I'm not in envy of that, but I'm there to support in any way I can. And that comes from my heart. So just know that if you need someone to carry the bags or just be there, you can call me. I'm, I'm the best price you're going to get ever. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, you know, uh, we just had a small event with OWA uh, organization, which is the Oahu Wedding Association. Um, and all the vendors there was in the same boat. And I tell everybody, I say, you know, if we can survive this pandemic, yeah. we can survive anything. Yes. This will probably be 
one of the hardest thing for any business industry to survive. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And we must stand together to support each other in any way. And that's good encouragement, especially coming from one business owner to another. Um, just continue to stand by each other's side. Right. So yeah, exactly. I know that you must offer and you offered many times, you said conferences, uh, the setups as well. And I'm sure that that was a great part of your business. How is it, you know, I mean, like Omicron is here now, but did you start getting conferences um, being booked up and then you'd have to cancel them or are some of them still continuing on? So we had event that was scheduled for January and February. In fact, we had a big New Year's Eve event in Waikiki would have been one of the biggest New Year's Eve event that we planned for mm -hmm. with a hotel, Waikiki Marriott. Mm -hmm. But because Omicron came and we had to cancel. And that's just one of the events that we had to cancel due to Omicron. Wow. Yeah, and I'm sure there's must, there must be so many. I mean, every business has those stories. And like, like you said, though, we'll take those, we'll put them on the side and we'll move forward and stay as hopeful and as positive as we can to get through these times. Because we know it's not over yet and we're just gonna pray for it to be over soon, right? Stay focused yeah, I mean, and positive. The way I look at it is this, you know, after two and a half years, I learned we need to move on, you know? Yes. And without business, we don't pay our taxes, the state cannot function. It's right. that simple, you know? Right. So with that said, you know, I just wish everybody, you know, out there, they all have the news. I respect everybody's opinions, yes. but we have to support local business because Amen. we are a island. Yes. We don't have too much industry that produce product that goes out. Mm -hmm. So whenever we have event, we have convention come to town, we just have to make sure everyone is safe, but we have to move on. Yes. Good attitude, and um, I'm sure that that greatness is contagious, so we stand together uh, as island people and support local. That's the main thing, right? We heard that all along, but now we have to live it. We have to live and breathe it daily, so we'll continue that model. You know, I know that you also offered a wide um, arraign, arraignment of um options in your business. So I know you have a lot of presentation equipment, like the big screens and the visuals and all that. Tell us about that, that, you know, let's talk about the positive of what you have and what people can look forward to when they use you in the future events. What other services can you offer? You know, Wendy, since you interview, I'm going to give you first crack at something brand new that okay. you're the second person that knows this in the state of Hawaii. Okay. So we are bringing in two brand new LED wall to the state of Hawaii. And because the product is so new, the manufacturers told me that this is a brand new product from the manufacturer themselves. Uh -huh. And it's a brand new LED wall for outside, inside, and also curve. And uh, the resolution is gonna be really high. It's probably, probably gonna be the highest resolution LED wall in the state when you get in. Wow. Uh, I can't wait to see it. And if you ever want to um, have a exhibition and you need opinions and critiques, then of course, again, give us that call and we'll be there to support and, and guide you along that way. But I'm excited to see that. You're always cutting edge, Joe. I'm so excited for you and, and what that brings to our um, events upcoming. So keep it up and keep letting people know so that they can go ahead and, and um, start preparing and using you in mind so that when we open up again, you have all the facilities and op um, options for them to make their event the best as we come back, right? Well, my, my job is try to make it a one-stop shop yes. because I've been doing this for a while and we've done over 6,500 events. So I have a lot of technical and event knowledge. So a lot of people say, oh, you should be my wedding planner or event planner. But I'm so busy as it is to plan each event to make sure everything mm -hmm. goes well. So I said to myself, you know, if you hire us, we do our best to make sure your event go well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, you know, in the day, um, being that in the past, all the board work that I've done, all the times I come to events, you know, we do the backside and then um, arranging and organizing. And then, of course, you're for hire and you come and you set it up. And I just, we're, we'd be on the same ballroom, but you'd be just buzzing away, making sure perfection is received and acquired as we 
take care of the tables and the registrations and all that. But I've worked side by side with you many times and I just admire your integrity um, from day one uh, and still till today and forth. So COVID um, or not, I know that you are there to support the best interest of all your clients. So continue your level of integrity, Joe. I've always admired that. And you know what? I always tell our client when you work with professional, your job is just relax and let us do the stress for you. And I work with you, like you say, many times, Wendy. How many times do we go down to a setup where something can go wrong? And <laughs> maybe a few times. And it's our job to go in and solve the problem. And we just tell the client, yeah, nothing Got is this. happening. In the meantime, what do we do? Yeah, I know. And you, I, I, I mean, you troubleshoot, you trouble solve, and I know that's the, the fun part as well. Sometimes when everything goes smooth, it's great, but we sometimes we like those challenges and those bumps, right? I mean, you gotta admit it because then it pushes us to be more uh, diverse and you know flexible. So I, I know that we we seem we have the same level of how do we uh, attack and approach a situation, and pulling out perfection always is the end result. And you hit it right in the spot, Wendy, because like every time when a job goes smooth, I say, wow, that was easy. But every <laughs> time when something goes wrong, and I'm all like, okay, let's try to think how we can solve the problem. And then you is Murphy's Law. They don't just come in one. They come in like three or four. And I'm all like, okay, well, what's next? What's next? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> never ask that one. I've never ask what's next. But, you know, um, in the midst of the pandemic, I know that you came out with a heartwarming way to express aloha. And I know that you received so much media coverage for this one project. And there may be more, but I know of one very clearly because I stay right next door. And when I look out my window, I see that, that image on that building. So tell us about the, the spirit of aloha that you shared throughout COVID in Waikiki. It was during the prime of the pandemic, and the general manager of the Marriott Waikiki, Thomas, gave me a call and said, Joe, it's not too often we have an empty building, okay? <laughs> Can we do something with this? I said, sure. What do you want to do? And then so he came up with the idea, and then we worked with his engineer, Christopher, and then they draw everything up. And the next thing you know, we spent almost four days and put this up and it was amazing. I think we we're one of the first to do it. And then my friend who worked for MGM in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. he saw my posting on Facebook and he said, oh, Joe, that's such a great idea. So they start doing the same thing in Las wow. Vegas. And once Las Vegas does it, that's it. The whole world starts to do the same thing and it went viral all over the world. Wow. I really enjoyed seeing that. I mean, I was sad that the rooms were all darkened. Like you said, the buildings in Waikiki were dark, but you gave us hope when we were in Waikiki and it made us all smile to see that, that, that image on that building. And um, yeah, I, it, even still to today when I see it, uh, it just makes me have goosebumps because it was such a valuable um, message to all of us in that dark darkness and exactly no. what it was, darkness. Yeah. That result, I mean, it took a lot of planning and, and I'm so glad at that time my crew went to work for free because I was getting no money from it, you know? And then so to make it perfect, we actually have to do it at night so we can see the room from the outside <laughs> and we have to drive around the blocks many, many times. <laughs> to aim the light, to move the chairs inside the room so it doesn't block the light on the window. We have to take off the curtain. We have to move the bed. We have to move the tables <laughs> and then so to get the final uh, picture to show what we've done, we never done this before. Right. So I knew it's going to be full moon that night. So, but I don't know what time the moon is going to be in front of the building. So we was up until 437 in the morning. That's when the moon was perfect without clouds covering the moon so we can get the perfect shot. Wow. Wow, I didn't know all that went into it, but of course, that's all behind the scenes. But all your energy and man hours really paid off. As I said, it, um, it's an image, uh, eerie image, but yet an image of hope. And it just reflects exactly. It was in a sea of darkness that love and aloha 
still shined and it was it was still it's just touching i whenever i see that photo right there it's always going to be um a good feeling for us and you know i stay right at the foster tower so we were looking straight into that you know and it was just beautiful i i i i, I told everybody that my friend my friend did that my friend did that i was so proud of you john i and for, i saw it on, on facebook so i knew you were responsible for that yeah they don't care about your friend they just want to look at the picture the final yeah. result <laughs> but i wanted to make sure that my friend i knew the guy who engineered that and it was i was very proud is what i'm trying thank to you say. thank you thank you mm -hmm. so um you know i just want to ask you can you share with us how did you personally stay healthy within the last two years so, you know, it's very difficult, you know? I mean, the first, I would say six to eight months, I was just like everyone else, stuck at home. And, and being such an active person, both you and I know that it's very difficult to keep us at home. Mm -hmm. So it's like doing push-ups, it's like thinking <laughs> what else I can do, what can I do to put my energy back in my company. So I was doing a lot of repair work and just try to see what is new out there I can bring to Hawaii, do a lot of research just to keep my mind going, you know, without going crazy. Right. And of all people, I mean, like for myself, it was tough and I let myself go a little bit. But in, in your line of business, I know your, your professional life is mystical sounds. And I know that you also have another side kick or another side passion. And for that, that's why I'm asking you, how did you stay in shape and stay healthy? Because you have another another part of your life um, that's in front of the camera instead of just behind. So I want to talk about that facet in your life. We know that you've always been involved in entertainment. So that means you must be around many celebrities. I have a photo. I grabbed the photo of you and Grace Park. So tell us about this photo because I understand you've been in many different um, movies and episodes of different sitcoms and shows. Tell us about this one with Grace Park. So that was for... Um... I think it was Hawaii Five O when they finished with uh, the shooting. That was a rap party that I was at, and she was there. And then I said, "Grace, can I take a picture?" She goes, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> and then later on, my friend asked me, "I said, hey, Grace, need a parking space for one of her vehicle?" And he knew I have an empty space, so Grace was parking her vehicle at my apartment at the time. But I didn't tell anybody about it, so no one knows it's Grace Park. You know that park. Yeah her vehicle at my building at the time. Yeah, so, might have started some rumors, so that, that was wise of you, Joe. <laughs> I then, guess we can keep a secret if we have to, right? So, so yeah, okay. So, uh, and then on top of doing Hawaii Five-O, I have to admit, you know, the film and TV industry kind of kept me going too, because mm -hmm. when everything was shut down, there were one of the few business that kept going, which is yeah. great for Hawaii economy during that time. Yes. So, you know, like I was really appreciated that I can at least get out of my house and work mm -hmm. on that. It's in the same, but a little bit different field. So I really enjoy it. Yes, and, um, and to get paid for it and then yet have an opportunity to just smooze with that, that facet of life, the entertainment industry, phenomenal. And I'm sure that it helped to keep your spirits alive and up in a dark time so you were blessed we were blessed to have that opportunity joe about how many episodes do you think uh you uh, you were on with hawaii Five? you know what i didn't even keep track of it i just done it and sometimes it's just yeah and sometimes i you know watching uh the reruns i say hey i totally forgot i was on that <laughs> That's even better. You're not even able to count. And I know you've been on Magnum PI. Have you been on Magnum? Yeah, in fact, I was just on Magnum PI yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you're still actively doing all of that, but which is good, right? Because it keeps you positively motivated and excited and keeping that body in shape, right? I like to keep myself busy. So most of this film and TV production is during the weekdays when mm -hmm. my company is not that busy, which is perfect. <laughs> That's my company is mostly really busy on the weekend. Yes. And then so with the two, just go hands in hand together. And they are very accommodating. So they say, if you cannot make it on the weekdays, we call you for the next one, which is perfect. Wow. Perfect. Plus the free food. Yeah. <laughs> See here, you have the same heart. Must be our last family name. Just feed us and we'll be smiling for you. <laughs> so as I looked on your website, you have hundreds of photos with so many celebrities and namesakes. I wanted you to 
uh, tell us about, I, I pulled out a picture of you and Kelly Hu. I wanted to know, is she still a local girl at heart? You know what, first of all, I want to apologize to your viewers. I hope they're not getting <laughs> blinded by my white skin, okay? So yeah, so you know, she was super down to her. And you know, I was, when I met her, I said, hey, I know you since you was like 15 years old, you know? Yes. And then uh, she, you know, she met so many people. She doesn't remember who I am. But wow. Anyway, she's like super gracious, gracious, and she said, "Yeah, you know." And 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 we we're just talking story about because I know her brother really well. I actually oh. hung out with her brother, like you know, before I even knew her. We used to be in JA do, together, so oh. he was one of my best friends at that time. Um, so I, um, I found another photo with you and my favorite person, Jackie Chan. Um, how was it working with Jackie? You know, Jackie is really funny. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. when I was working with him on Rush Hour 2, this was filming in Las Vegas. And then, so I say, what do you, what, what's your thought about filming in America versus filming in Asia? So I remember this one line he told me, he said, in America, you got 10 people doing one job. In Asia, you got one person doing 10 jobs <laughs> and a lot cheaper. <laughs> right, well, that's a true Chinese, right? He, he knows the numbers. So, wow, you know, um, I was with Jackie Chan. It was a, a blessing and a dream come true. I held the position of being Jackie Chan's treasurer for the Jackie Chan United States of America Foundation. And Dr. Lauren Seyu was our president. But it was a dream job because I would go and when he was in the US, I would follow him and he would write me or write checks to the USA Foundation. And I knew, um, I know that a few times I brought back checks to Hawaii and he donated like thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to different organizations here in Hawaii. Wow. So he's a very kind and generous man. I just love his spirit and his heart and all the success to him. So, you know, I wanted to come back again to that, the heart on the building. I truly, you have no idea, I love that message that was created on the Waikiki Marriott. So I wanted to end our, our talk with that and just tell, you know, I know you want, I want you to just share with your, our audience, you know, and continue to encourage them to all work together to make Hawaii and our businesses great again. So leave us with a few words in that direction, Joe. Um, I really hope that everyone support local business, you know, because the bottom line is everyone, local business wise, they pay taxes, you know, it's like circle. We all help each other, you know? Yes. And with our local business, basically, you know, Hawaii would be just very hard to survive. We don't have any too much uh, industry. We don't have too much uh, manufacturing, you know, industry. So what we support do, local, whatever we do, local, right? Eventually, we're gonna put the money back into our workers here, our economies here. Yes. Yes. So, Joe, you know, our time for now has come to an end. You've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo, Joe, from Mystical Sounds for talking story with us and for making our events a bit more cutting edge and with heart. Mahalos to you, and we're so proud of you. I'm Wendy Lowe. We'll be back in two weeks, and we'll see you then. Aloha and mahalo, Joe. Thank you.